Today, we're painting an orc. That's right. I'm going to be painting one of the Headcracker's Mad Mob. How dare you, Angela, by the four. That's right. We're going to be painting up a Headcracker Mad Mob, just like I cracked the head of that Chaos Cultist for interrupting me while I talk about these glorious orcs. Now, I have a few objectives for this particular video, one of which being to get into the headspace for painting the Beast Snaga orcs that are going to be coming out for 40k here in a bit because I'm super hyped about those boys. And I've been wanting to play with some bright colors again because ever since I painted the Chameleon from the Seraphon set from Underworlds a little while ago, I've been really wanting to play with these bright colors. So I'm gonna take the opportunity on this orc who's very feral, very natural and everything to play with some color. So without further ado, let's head to the hobby table. Thanks, Angela. As you can see, I have built up the Mad Mob and they are looking pretty cool. They're actually really unique in the fact that they are all open. There are no like hidden areas on these guys, so I can actually pick and choose which ones I want to paint for you solely based off of the sculpt and the weapon that they have, which is really exciting for me because sometimes I try to pick things that are going to be better for tutorialization and all of these models work. So I've been looking at all of these models, right? And this guy is really cool. He's got this really rad axe, but the Chaos Cultist has claimed him. So we're yeah, not, right, I did. Yeah, yeah, he did. So we're not going to be painting him up. I think he's out. Now, we do have this big guy on the slightly larger base with the dual, like, Wolverine claws, which is really rad. But he's kind of... I feel like I've seen a lot of orcs like this, where it's just, like, furs and claws and everything. So I'm not super thrilled by him specifically. Now, we have these other two guys, which are the ones that I'm a lot more interested in. We've got our archer guy, and we also have the mad mob leader himself, with his mask, which is really, really cool. But I don't quite think I wanna do the mask yet. I have some ideas of where I wanna go with it, but I haven't fully thought out my color scheme and I'm not quite ready to approach him. So I'm going to be painting today this guy with the bow and arrow because one, I actually don't feel like I get to paint a lot of miniatures with bows and arrows very often. They don't seem to like be a thing very regular. Well, definitely not in 40K, obviously. But even in fantasy miniatures modernly, I feel like I don't see archer miniatures very often. So he's really cool. I'm very excited and I have some ideas of what I want to do with him. I'm going to actually keep him relatively natural looking. We're going to do a green flesh tone, obviously, because he's orc and everything. And I have a plan for that, something that I actually did on my orc boys like a year ago, I think, in a previous video. So we're going to start with a base coat of... Um, Plague Bearer Flesh and then do a Bealton shade over top of it, which gives us this really nice apple green orc flesh. But I also want to keep him relatively naturalistic, so I'm going to do a lot of leather tones, except for on his um, weapon here. I'm going to do a pop of color there to help bring out some of that flesh tone, add a little brightness in there, and just play with some designs and keep him really bright and colorful. So I'm excited for this. Let's go ahead and get to painting. I wanted to start with an undercoat using Wraithbone because I figured that the slightly yellow hue that this particular primer has would complement the warm color palette that I was going to be using throughout my painting process on this project. And I'm going to jump right into some colors using Plague Bearer's Flesh. I did this on my Orc Boy a long time ago, almost a year now where I started with an undercoating using this Plague Bearer's Flesh Tone, which has this very, very deep sort of lime green color, but leans very yellow. And what this ends up doing is creating a very rich, warm highlight that will be basically shown through when I put a darker green color tone over it later. And it basically creates this beautiful blend of cool shadows, warm highlights, and without this undercoating, I honestly don't know if painting orc flesh would be quite as fun for me because going just straight green never really quite does it. But let's go ahead and move on and get a shade down on this color now to really bring out those colors I was talking about. 
To help knock back some of those warm color tones that we've already put down on our model, I'm going to now take BL Ton Green Shade and apply this over the, his entire flesh again. And this is gonna be straight out of the pot. We're not gonna water it down. We're just going to apply this pretty liberally over the entire model. This is going to create those cool shadow tones that I was talking about because you might notice BL Ton has a little bit of a blue-green hue to it. And over top of this Plague Bearer's flesh, it just blends, creates this beautiful apple green color, but you still get some warm highlights on the top of the raised muscles, whereas you still get some deep shadows in the grooves of the muscles because of the shade. And it just works super well, and it's quick and easy, which is why I love painting orc flesh this way. All right, his flesh tones are drying. I'm really happy with how his flesh is looking because it's just, it is the right level of cool shadows, warm highlights that I'm precisely wanting. But he needs to be cleaned up now because I got was a little messy, you know, how it happens sometimes. So we're gonna clean him up and then I'm gonna move on to his leathers. And I'm going to be going with something that contrasts, but I don't want it to be too bold. We're gonna play with a little bit of color. But we're gonna keep it pretty natural and everything. I'm very excited because I do have some plans for some brighter pops of colors that we'll get to later in the video. So let's go ahead and get my orc cleaned up and ready for some more paint. Hey guys, if you are enjoying this video, make sure to hit that like button and let me know about it down in the comments. If you haven't already and you're wanting more content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon for notifications. And then if you want even more hobby goodness, make sure to follow me on Instagram or Twitter at hobby underscore night. Now, let's go ahead and get back to the video. All right, who's ready for some additional colors? Because I know that I am, but first I need to do a cleanup stage. So I'm gonna pull out a pot of Wraithbone and use this to clean up any of the areas where I got some greens or yellows that I didn't want them. My orc boy is looking fantastic, and I'm really pleased with how his skin has turned out, but I'm ready to move on and actually start getting to those leathers that I keep talking about. And to start, I'm gonna pull out snake bite leather, which is a color that I haven't been using super regularly, but have sort of rotated it back into my color palette, and I really like it, especially how it ends up taking on this slight orange hue against this green skin tone of my orc. I'm gonna apply this to a few key locations, but also not putting it on everything that's leather on him, because I do wanna have a different color to help differentiate and break up some of his color palette. So for now, we're gonna apply this to the straps on the bow and arrow, to the piece on his chest, and a few other key areas to just make sure that we have a nice sprinkling of this color throughout the model. My orc is very concerned about shooting his arrows as quickly as possible to help the headcracker mob do their work and crack some heads. So to make him go faster, he's gonna paint the strap that's on his arm, as well as the scabbard he's pulling all of his arrows out of in red to just go and just go really, really fast and draw them out. And I really like this complement of color. It pops beautifully against the skin tone. And I decided that Blood Angels would be the best color for this as opposed to Flesh Terrors, because I actually thought Flesh Terrors was too dark. I wanted this to be bright, bold, and basically look like, like a fire hydrant or a stop sign or something. And Blood Angels tends to lean a little bit more towards that bright, slightly red-orange color. And it works beautifully. For the last bit of leather on my orc, we're going to go ahead and pull out Nazdrag Yellow, which ends up being this really beautiful sort of orangey yellow, like leather color tone that almost appears amber, which I really, really liked so much that I want to do it on his eye as well to sort of have this color in two places, but have it be relatively restricted. And I really, really like the way that this turns out. I think all of the colors that I've chosen for my leathers really complement with each other, but all still stand out distinctively and have a like just a little bit more of a tribal look to them. And I really dig that for this sort of feral looking orc. While I was working with the Nasdreg yellow, I actually noticed that he had these like stitching on the quiver where his arrows were and I wanted to go ahead and go back over those with some snake bite leather real quick to help pop them out and bring that detail a little bit more forward. This is often a step that I skip 
And I find that when I don't, I'm a little bit happier with my end results because I feel like I took a little bit of extra time to pull out just enough detail to really push him to like a beyond table ready level. And I'm really trying to explore and challenge myself with that. So this was a really easy way for me to just push that and go forward with that challenge. And I'm really happy with it. The leathers are done and they're looking pretty good. So now I think it's time to move on to like the rest of the organic stuff that is on this boy. And we're gonna start with his weapons because I decided after having looked at my chameleon skink that I had done previously on a different video, that I wanted to pull back out dark oath flesh and use this to create a teak color tone on the wood of his uh, bow, as well as the shafts of his arrows. I just really liked the look that I had gotten previously with this color, and I think that it will complement with the leather tones I've already applied to the model and keep with sort of a jungle theming that I'm going for with this guy, even though ultimately he doesn't end up in a jungle with his basing, but his color palette I kind of mimicked after what I had done with some of the skinks. Because I am now thinking about my chameleon, I decided that I wanted to pull out some Magos Purple, which I had also used on some of the other skinks in that warband, not specifically the chameleon, but some of the other ones, and use this on the top knot as well as the fletching on the arrows for my orc boy. I really wanted to keep with sort of this bright color pops that I was doing and Magos Purple brought in a little bit of a red tone without going too true red and taking away from the Blood Angels color that I already put down. Magos leans a little bit red violet, which is really nice, but it actually kind of pushes weirdly into this cool color palette. So it oddly plays very well with everything that I've got going on on this model. For the next color, I'm going to pull out Aethermatic Blue, which I'm going to be applying to the rest of the feathers that are all over my Orc Boy. And I chose this because I really just like the way that it complements with the Magos Purple. Um, I really like this particular blue tone with that red-violet tone, and it just works really, really well, in my opinion, against the green color that I got from the skin. So overall, it was just a, ooh, I thought that color was pretty and wanted to use it. Plus, again, it kind of gives you that a little bit of that jungle theme, and I really wanted to push that a little bit with this guy, even though that's not where he ends up. The arrowhead that my orc is rocking looks actually pretty traditional to me, so I decided to pull out some Black Templar and paint it so that it looks sort of like flint um, or just sort of a classic arrowhead, because I really liked that look, and I didn't want to go with a gray or some other like metallic color, because I just didn't think it would work with the very natural looking orc that I have and all the organic materials that he has on him. Because if you've noticed, we've not gone for any metallics, even his bracelets and stuff, it's all been woods or dyes and that kind of thing. And that's really the vibe that I was going for him. I think it works perfectly. It's time to take care of all of those teeth and all of those skulls because my goodness, there's quite a bit of them. And for this, I'm going to be using Skeleton Horde, of course, because it is perfect for when you're wanting to work on skeletons. And you can actually play with it really easily and get some differentiating effects out of it with not a lot of effort. And I'm gonna do that here to try to give the orc a little bit of character and narrative to some of these bits and bobs that are hanging off of them. Um, and how we're going to do that is by applying a couple of layers of Skeleton Horde to a few sections, in particular, say, like, the um, bird skull that he's got on his hip. That's going to get a couple of layers, whereas the teeth are going to only get a single coating so that they're paler, maybe appear more bleached as if he's had them for longer. Whereas the bird skull, because it's darker, maybe he just recently, like, had the flesh ripped off of it and everything, and so it's still got a little bit of coloring and all of that fleshy bits on it still. So that was the idea, and I think this is a really easy way to play with these colors and do some differing things without a lot of effort. I am really happy with how this guy is coming out so far. So I don't actually have that much left to do on him. His skin, all of his organic bits are all done. He's looking amazing and I'm really pleased, but we have a few things left, just basically the base, and then he's gonna be ready to go, and I am really looking forward to this because he has turned out way better than I was actually anticipating for this guy, despite the fact that it's a really simple color scheme and really simple design. So I'm really pleased, let's get back to it. 
The orc is done. So now it just means we need to move on to his base. And for that, I decided to keep it fairly classic and go with some gray stone. So we're gonna pull out Basilicanum Gray and put a single coating of this over the entire base. Not really caring too much if I overlap with the bones that are on the base a whole lot because I'm going to be able to do a cleanup stage in between putting colors down on them to basically tidy them back up. But I do take a little bit of time to be a little clean on them. Now, once I have a first layer of this color down, I'm not super thrilled with how it's looking. So I decided to go back with a second coating and try to pull out a few areas that either were just too desaturated already where the pigment didn't stick super well because maybe I just didn't get my paint down well enough or the paint was too thinned or where I just wanted to add a little bit of variety. In particular, I decided to darken some of the rocks to help them stand out a little bit more away from the ground so that there was a bit more variation there. I thought it would be fun to tie in an orc's flesh color to their bone color a little bit because orcs have always been described to me as fungus and so I imagine their physiology works a little bit differently and maybe that means their bones are tinted a little bit of a different color. So I'm going to apply some plague bearer's flesh to the orc skull that is beneath my living boy to basically give it a little bit of this tint and basically make it go like, yeah, no, it's definitely an orc bone, even though it's very obviously so with, with the skull shape and everything and the teeth and all that but I just thought this would be a nice little touch. For the tusks and as well to mute that skull that I just painted with a little bit of Plague Bear flesh, I'm going to pull Skeleton Horde back out and apply this in a single coating over top all of those items. This will not only color the teeth on the orc skull, but it will knock that green tone back a little bit, still making them feel very much like bone, but just like alien bones. And the tusk will end up being a nice lighter color tone, which will stand out beautifully against that dark gray undertone that I have for the ground. Now, while I was doing this painting, I wasn't super thrilled with how the ground was working. So let's do one final thing to this model to really make him finished and wrap this up. And that final thing is going to be using a little bit of Agrath's Earthshade on just the ground portions of the base. I decided that the ground and rocks were blending still too much despite the darkening that I had done. And having Agrath's Earthshade over top brings in a slightly warm brown hue to it, making the stone look like it's dust covered rather than actually being dirt, which is really what I was going for. And now I'm very pleased with the final model. And let's take a look at the final result. And here he is, my fantastic little orc boy with his bow and arrow, which I absolutely love. Painting this guy was a lot of fun, which is exactly what I expected and what I had hoped going into this project because when I tend to pick up these underworld kits, that's usually, it's for fun. It's because I want to do something that's different something that I'm not going to necessarily be doing all the time. And also just like, there's a lot of ways to play with like cool colors and everything with these kits. And that is what I got to explore here with this orc. And it has me especially pumped for the Beast Snag orcs later, because like I said in the intro, I'm definitely gonna be picking up some kits from that army, if not just full on starting an orc army, using them as the foundation for it. And painting these guys has gotten me really excited for that because the Beast Nagas tend to lean a little bit more feral in the regards to like the 40k verse in the same way that the Mad Mob did for this paint scheme. So I'm going to probably be applying some of these colors and everything to those models later on down the line, which is really, really cool. I'm really looking forward to it. And while I was working on this guy, it actually occurred to me that there's some things that I can try in the future on those beast snagas that I'm gonna be practicing and showing off on my Instagram with maybe doing some freehand and some like tribal patterns on them. Because with all of those really cool chunky like armor pieces that the beast snagas are gonna have, I think it'd be really cool to do some patterns and some fun theming on that. So I wanna start practicing that. And I think with some of these guys, cause they got really big open like skin pieces and everything, I can start doing some like tribal designs on their chest. So I'll probably touch back on that later on my Instagram and everything, but I really enjoyed painting this guy. Let me know what you thought of my paint scheme down below, whether or not you're gonna be getting those beast snagas or if you've picked up the Mad Mob yourself and how you painted them up. I've been Angela, you've been watching Hobby Night, and I will see you guys next week for more painting videos as well as some more Warhammer news. See ya.
so without further ado, let's head to the hobby table. Why did you hit me harder each time? Oh. 